I've always wanted to be a head coach so I could take care of my sons, don't. You know, a lot of people think it's about ego and you want to become a head coach and do all these things. My goal for being a head coach has always been to be able to hire my son as an assistant equipment guy in the, in the equipment room so he can be by my side because my son will never play football. You know what I mean? And I'll be just glad to see him have the opportunity to make it that far and be in the equipment room, you know, and just have maybe shining helmets or picking up shoes. I mean, that's been my whole motive for wanting to be a head coach is to have an opportunity to oversee a program so my son can be by my side because uh, I don't get too many days with him and his days are numbered. I uh, grew up in Brookfield, Ohio. It's a suburb here of Youngstown. Uh, went to Ursuline High School. Dad was a steel worker. Mom was a typical housewife. I recall several times that when I would misbehave, my dad would take me out to midnight turn, midnight turn in the steel mill and kind of show me what uh, it was like to work an hourly wage job and how hard it was and how important it was to go to college and get an education. I had a unique experience that, you know, a lot of the guys at my high school were being highly recruited. Uh, I wasn't highly recruited. Eric was always a guy that he gave you 100% on the practice field, 100% on the game field, 100% in the meeting room. He was always locked in and focused. And uh, he is a guy that just worked. The coaches loved him because every play, you got everything you had. They were on a 33-game losing streak. And uh, Sports Illustrated actually did an article that we were the worst program in uh, college football. And uh, we kind of took that personal. And uh, when I left, uh, we were 9-2-1, and one, won the first bowl game in school history. A hard-nosed guy, you know, he's kind of a throwback to yesteryear the way he played. He just slugged it out with people. And he was a really, really good football player for us at Kansas State. That was a, a good experience and a sense of accomplishment for all of us K-State guys. Probably could have stuck it out, stuck it out a little bit and maybe tried out with a couple other teams, but uh, Coach Snyder asked me to get into coaching, come back, help him out there, and started out as a student assistant. And, kind of worked my way up, but that was the right choice for me. I was a busy person. I was working a lot, and so one evening after one of the classes I taught, I went out and met some of my girlfriends for dinner. And at around 8 o'clock, I hadn't eaten yet. So I got there at the restaurant and Wolfie and some of his friends were sitting at another table. And um, Wolfie came over and uh, asked me for my number. I did, I gave him my number and uh, we went to lunch the next day and we just had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun hanging out, so. She's a psychologist, I always tell her she's probably writing a book on me. But uh, we had a, uh, uh, it was a situation where you know, we were both professionals, uh, had both had our careers, we were older in life, but uh, she's definitely been the, uh, the best recruit that uh, I've ever had at, uh, in my career. Well, he's so charismatic. He just kind of, he's like one of those people that his spirit kind of, his body follows his spirit. Like as big as he is, when he's in the room, his personality and his charisma are bigger than him. And I knew that just the first time I met him. She's 
she wasn't going to leave Fort Worth unless we got married. So we got married and it was the best day of my life. She has the ability to kind of reel him in. And even though there may not be many people, you know, that have the ability to say no or, or, or kind of, you know, tell him that that's not the right thing, she has no problem putting him in his place. So I think she's a perfect compliment. Just great people, down to earth people, and, you know, and I think, you know, people that fit very well, you know, in this community. Uh, very family oriented and, and very welcoming. He was always so very compassionate with families and with, with typical people and especially with those people who had needs, special needs. So that was another thing that I found really attractive about him. The, the pregnancy was okay, but um, like typical, but um, when he was born he had a lot of medical issues and um, it, was, it was stressful because we were constantly going to new doctors to see if we could find out what was wrong. You know, there's a lot of uh, stories that go along with Stone, but in a nutshell, uh, my wife and another doctor diagnosed him. Been to several doctors. Um, most kids that have CFC, there's no cure. Um, life expectancy isn't very long. Uh, we are making some headway on research and progress there, but uh, Stone's ahead of the curve and uh, we've been able to keep him off the feeding tube and get him the therapies he needs and, and those type of things. And I was in the car, it was a morning, I was on my way to work and I had pulled up to my job and she called and she said, I have the results here. I said, you need to tell me what they are. And she said, I can't do that, not in the car, you've got to come in. I said, I need to know. I'm about to have this baby, I need to know. And she said, I don't think it's wise for me to tell you. And I said, so it is a confirmation, right? And she said, yes, it is. And I said, I can handle this. I have a degree in school psychology with an emphasis in neuropsychology. I can handle this. And I, I have to tell you, it was one of the most difficult moments of my life to get that confirmation. And at the same time, it opened so many doors for where we would go. He, he's just a joy to be around. He, he's always smiling and he's always having a good time. He, he makes you appreciate the things you have. Um, he, he makes you count your blessings. Um, and he's really special. I like seeing him. He's, he's a good friend of the team and, and he's, he's our little mascot. And Stone, he's just, he's just a great kid. It really lets, makes you appreciate what you have and what you might have in the future. Oh, Stone's awesome. I mean, uh, we love when he's around, he's like a little brother to us. And he also makes us appreciate, I mean, what we're able to do and be able to play this game of football, something that he never will be able to do. So when he's around us, I mean, we have fun with him. We talk to him all the time and he's like a little brother to us. We love Stone. Stone is like his dad. He, he just, just trying to get better and improve and, and just climb that ladder all the time. And, and uh, he's just a great inspiration to all of us. And I, I'm, I'm inspired by him. He's really taught us a lot of life lessons uh, as far as just being patient and enjoying every day you have with people and, and that type of thing. I know that Wolf loves Stone so very much and he accepts him for who he is. And he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that he gets the most out of life. She thinks she's 21. She's uh, she runs the house, I guess you would say. But uh, she's been a, a blessing, and she's been great for Stone. She she adds siblings do this, but she really does add this whole dimension of competition for him. And he is super competitive on his level, but he's super com competitive. So I believe that she has challenged him to make gains in ways that he might not have been able to or not been motivated to, to, to move forward. She's really stimulated him, uh, made him better. Uh, they play, uh, fight once in a while, but like brothers and sisters do, but she's really been a, a positive addition for Stone and just his overall progress uh, as, a, as a young child. I think what he gives to her is he gives her an understanding of a different world a compassion that she might not have had otherwise and 
she is extremely independent. She's a very independent child, which I'm a very ind independent person. Coach is a very independent person, so I think she comes by it naturally. But she takes it upon herself to take care of him. What really spiked uh, the starting of the foundation was this, is uh, Stone needed a helmet for his head uh, because of his odd shaped head. And the insurance company had told the doctor that it wasn't within one millimeter that it needed to be in. And uh, you know, fortunately we had the resources to be able to pay for the helmet. So I just said, that's fine. But it upset me enough to, to tell my wife, from like, this is a reason why we need to start a foundation to help other people with kids with disabilities. That grieving piece kind of came to fruition and we were able to kind of reframe where we were. And it was at that point that we just started talking about how hard it was for us as educated people, as people who I have background in special education, I know how to work with families of children with special needs and know how to access services and look how hard and stressful this was. We can raise money because we're fortunate that we have a lot of people that we have connections with. We can raise money and help families that have kids with disabilities. There's a lot of hidden costs that insurances don't cover. And we need to be able to help those people out. At the same time, we can raise money for research and hopefully find a cure for CFC. And what we've done since then is we opened a therapeutic learning center. And the name of it is No Stone and Turn Therapeutic Learning Center. We partnered with um, a, a doctor of OT, Jeff Mathis, and Mathis PT, he did work, he does work, he has a, a clinic for adults. And within five months, we were full. We provide speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, sensory integration therapy, and feeding therapy. We hired a behavior therapist. She was hired on a, uh, on a Friday. By the next week, her schedule was full and she hadn't even started working yet. Um, we're looking at expanding our services to do assessments. Um, we're also hiring a therapist to work with the families to help them work through some of their issues in terms of how they deal with the stress of being uh, parents of a child with significant needs. You know, I think before uh, Coach Haycock's last game, uh, he announced that he was resigning. And then at that point after, I was contacted by a couple of auxiliary people to see if there was an interest. Uh, and of course I said yes, but uh, really uh, until after the season, uh, I wasn't contacted for any type of formal interview or anything like that until uh, after the season was over. For him, it was really difficult because I'll tell you, he was offensive line coach, run game coordinator for South Carolina, which is an SEC school. We had it all. It was absolutely fabulous. Games, you know, were just huge and big and fun and everybody admired and loved him and, and just thought he was the best coach ever. Well, I thought it was important for some for us to, to bring someone who was going to bring a lot of energy back into the program. Um, and, you know, someone that had uh, a lot of experience and, and success in recruiting. He, wants, he has always wanted to be a head coach and when this position became an option or a possibility for him. He was very excited about it because it was his hometown, because he knows the history of Youngstown, because he loves Youngstown so much, because his family was here. And it was, it was a difficult decision to make, but not for him. Not every day you get an opportunity to be a head coach at a place with a great tradition, a uh, place that has high expectations. At the same time, I think you have to be able to handle those expectations. And that's why it was important for me early on to lay down a foundation. Everybody wants to think that Youngstown's a unique market, and everybody thinks that their hometown is a unique town and different unto anybody else. Um, but what he gets 
and what he understands having grown up in the valley is the people in this valley and how important it is you know to succeed and, and make sure your football program does things the right way and that you know the kids are respectful and they're kids that you can look up to and be proud to say that they play for Youngstown State. He understands the backbone of this community. He's a relaxed guy but he, he's a guy who he wants to get his stuff done. He's about business. He's, uh, he's a driven guy and he, he really wants his team to excel, uh, team to excel and uh, see success. We weren't going to operate like a flash in the pan. We we're going to build for the long haul and do things the right way as far as having accountability and discipline from A to Z in our program. I mean, he knows that this was the right decision for him. It was an awesome decision for our family. I've never been happier. I love my job. Um, I get to be with his family. Our kids get to, to grow up with other Wolfords and Heaters, you know, the, that family. I mean, I, he recruited me here, so I was one of his first recruits of his recruiting class. And uh, I mean, that's really the main reason I came here is because of him. He sold uh, the program and the tradition and bringing this back to what it used to be, and I wanted to be a part of that. First day in the office, uh, I came up here and I had a press conference and uh, that afternoon at 3 o'clock, but I was talking to Coach Spurrier on the phone and he was telling me that I was going to come back to South Carolina and he was, you know, you know going to get me back down there. And, I just told him that this was an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. And really, from there, it's been a, it's been a little bit of a blur. Of the moves that we've made, it's the best one we've made. And this is the happiest we've been. We really do love it here, and we really do feel like this is where we're supposed to be. The expectations as fans is an immediate, we want to do it today. Oftentimes, it's a trial and error process. And you can equate it to a lot of coaches. With Coach Wolford, you know, he inherited a program that obviously is based with a strong tradition. Um, you know, based in an area where football obviously is very important to its fan base. Uh, my first year was very difficult, probably the most difficult year of my life. Uh, just the gut-wrenching uh, last-minute, two-minute losses at the end of the game. And, uh, you know, it was, it was tough to endure. But the positive thing was is our kids came back and, and would start out the next week on fire. It was a tough season. It was one of those seasons where uh, we were trying to get a feel for each other, I think. He was getting a feel for our team, and uh, we were getting a feel for him as a head coach. Uh, we had early success. We, you know, we, hit, we came out, played Penn State early. Um, had some success there, played Southern Hill, and, and then we kind of got into the conference and we realized that this conference is a grind. It's, it's, it's a tough game every week. I mean, we didn't have a lot of experience out there, so when it came close, I guess you could have gave the upper hand to them, but I mean, we fought hard, we played hard, and I think it helped a lot of us now. I don't think it's, you, you can turn a program around uh, at this level as fast as you can when you got 63 scholarships, you know? Uh, when you got 85, that's 22 more, 22 more bodies. And when you're trying to flip a program around and, go, and, and build a program and get back to winning, uh, you know, I used to think you can do it in three or four years, you know, uh, I don't know. And we needed to prepare more, we needed to be bigger and stronger, and we really took the offseason um, very, we, we had a really important offseason that year. You know, when I look back at it, uh, you know, we weren't ready. We just weren't ready yet. We, we focused on the little things like weightlifting and, and focused on academics and being, being a championship person all the time and, and realizing that if we want to get to the playoffs, we need to do things, um, you know, like champions every single day. And, and we kind of took some of those things for granted. We, we went to school, we, we were going around just you know, going through the motions, and you can't do that if you want to make the playoffs. So we definitely realized the importance of that. Had, I think it was, what, 13 freshmen were starting at some point in the year, which is a lot for a Division I program. There were a lot of freshmen, a lot of, a lot of sophomores. And we just weren't, I don't think we were mentally there because we were just so young, weren't ready for everything that was getting thrown at us at once. Well, we all should have made it. We should have made the playoffs that year and to miss it by one game and hurt. But like I said, now I think we know that every game is important to us and we got to, every game matters. 
that was probably the most disappointing thing to me is, is we're too up and down, too inconsistent. You know, you go and play North Dakota State and play them really well, and then you come back and, and lose, lose the game late again, uh, last few seconds. That was a tough pill to swallow, you know. Uh, we win that game, we're probably in the playoffs year two. You know, I think everyone knows about the Pitt football game, and that was a unique experience just to be able to play in Heinz Field. Being a Steelers fan, it was uh, that much sweeter, but uh, it, was, it was a good experience for our program, and it's the first time we've ever beat a BCS team. I think it validates everything that Ron Strollo and Eric Wolford want to achieve. Um, I think what it does, it lends credence to not just Youngstown State, but to FCS football, that it can compete with the FBS, you know, that it's not, you know, big brother, little brother. Even though it may be that way economically and, and financial budgets, um, but heart, determination still play out. Pitt was fun. Pitt was a great time and it was one of those things where we just wanted to, we, we believed in each other and we believed in ourselves um, and everybody counted us out and, and we wanted to go and shock the world and we wanted to um, show what we were all about and, and show what kind of team we were and we did. So, you know, I'm proud of that win. Whenever you get in, you always try to make your impact on the game, and that, that game was just huge. You know, a huge win for us as a team, us as a family, and huge for recruiting, recruiting-wise. It really put our name out there. I mean, when we first got here, I remember Coach Wolf saying the media was asking if we could score a touchdown against a Division I school, and he looked at him like, what are you talking about? So to beat, I mean, Pitt, that was an accomplishment for all of us. I know Coach Wolford was probably most excited out of all of us because he knew we could beat them, and he preached it to us that we could, and we believed it, and we went out there and did it. The rankings had absolutely nothing, you know, the only rankings we worry about is the one at the end of the year, but the rankings uh, is a distraction, I think, for the kids, you know, we don't, we don't, I, I never even talk about it, I never even address it. I still say you have to walk before you run, um, you know, we had seen his, his coaching ability in each of those first three years, and uh, in last year you got a taste of, of how close they really were. Would you like to make the playoffs in his third year here in 12? Yes. Um, but you got close and you got a chance to kind of see what was on the horizon. And now you see that here. We had it in last year's team. It's just luck of the draw sometimes that uh, doesn't allow you to be the on the top all the time. But, but I, I really believe in what we're doing here and I believe in what he's doing. And we don't talk about it a lot. Media tends to kind of focus on the negative pieces and, and the things that people are interested in in terms of controversy. We had a lot of success early with the pit win, beating Northern Iowa the first time in 11 years. Uh, that we thought maybe, uh, even though we talked about as coaches, uh, we felt like that uh, maybe we got a little too full of ourselves and thought we could just show up and flip a switch and be able to play football. Once the balloon got deflated after North Dakota State, everything just went downhill. We just, everything went downhill. Like the Illinois State up, being up 20 to seven and blowing that game is just, everybody was down on each other and kind of team morality, team chemistry went down a lot during that stretch. Uh, last year was, I mean, it was similar to the year before. We had early success and, and we kind of just didn't stay focused and we didn't um, continue to push each other and we didn't, you know, probably try to improve every day like we need to and this year we're focused this year we're we're working on fundamentals and we're working on improving um, not, not not letting that happen like it did last year He is a warrior um, and somebody who's very driven, and, and I admire that in him. I admire that in you know him being a head coach and, and trying to improve his life and improve his uh, relationship with his wife and improve his relationship with his children and, 
and I admire that in him. He's a great man. I'm with somebody that I really uh, love and, and, and have great respect for, and somebody that's been, um, you know, kind of a, a guy that has always asked me for help uh, on certain things, and now he's really asking for me to help him in a way that, you know, that maybe I can make a, a small impact. He's just a different guy than people think he is, and he's different. I mean, some of the things he does, we look at him like, man, why you do that? But it's funny at the same time, so he's a great guy. I mean, we all love him, and we came to play for him for a reason. He's really spiritual, which I, I've come to be uh, a word, more inept with, and he's a great person. Just If you ever have a problem, you go talk to him. You know, he brings a certain aura about him, and by that I mean, you know, he's got, he's an energetic guy, he's a positive guy, um, you know, he's a, he actually kind of brings out the best in a lot of people. And the nice thing is, you know, he's a genuine guy. It's not, it's not a put on thing like, hey, I got to get to know you because I work with you. You know, I think he genuinely likes the people he works with and cares about them. I know we have to win. I know football teams need to win, and it, and it, everything goes down to money, right? But. Mm -hmm. But I really, I really do believe that what they'll leave with is, is a lot more valuable than just a championship, which that's going to happen too. And all these guys are special to me. Uh, they all have their unique ways. Uh, when I'm having a bad day, I enjoy getting around our players. But uh, th these kids are all special to me. I love each and every one of them. I enjoy being around them. I have fun with them. Uh, some days are tough, love. They'll be the first to tell you that. But uh, we have a great family atmosphere, and it's a uh, good coach-player relationship. And you know, there's there's times I, I could go on for days. Listen, if we can't all have fun, what's the use of, of living? I'm trying to think when's the last time. Hello? Oh, that's Joe's phone. Hey, Coach Saban would body slam me right now. Huh? That would not be good, would it? There's enough negativity in our society today. Locked into that dark room in there for all, all day and until I see you guys. You guys got all these bright colors on today. You guys look good. Got a little wildcat purple, banana yellow. You look like a autumn harvest over there. <laughs> what, like a, you look like an apple. A nice gala apple. We only live once, man. We got one shot at this thing. I get worried about pheasants and rabbits being in there. You know what I mean, we get on the plane sometimes. I worry about you know livestock commission stepping on there and pulling them off. But uh, he's a unique individual, isn't he? Huh? I met uh, Willie from Duck Dynasty and them guys a couple years ago at the Preakness, and he's getting near that length. Great, thanks, man. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Why did you go for two at, at that first touchdown instead of a uh, a goal? I wanted to make sure that people, when people play us in the future, that they're lining up correctly and making them work during the week, spend a little extra time on that formation. Do you think that was a good idea? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what the rule is. Hmm. Eight is better than seven. Absolutely. It's a TV show we do in the gym. Okay. I am Eric Wolford, head football coach, Youngstown State University, and I am, what's the name of the show? Jack Up the Ref. Okay. Jack Up the Ref? Rev. Rev. Hi. I am, this is for the Jack Up the Rev show? Yes. Okay. I am Eric Wolford, head football coach, Youngstown State University, and this is for Jack Up the Rev. I want you to know uh, from a player's perspective, from a coach's perspective, your uh, enthusiasm, your passion, uh, the way you harass the opposing team is something that we thoroughly enjoy. So we have to keep that going. You need to distract the other team. You guys need to wear them out. Just make fun of them, give them a hard time, make fun of their
coaches and all those kind of things. And uh, we'll do our part on the field.